Hello, can you hear me? <laughs> might have to, I might have to persist with my glasses on because even though I'm on a laptop, I, the, the text is still quite small, but at least it's going through a lot slower than my mobile. And uh, the cam I'm using is not bad. It's from my PC inside, but I don't think it's great. You can see the background's a bit washed out. Can you hear me? Okay. Or is... Or am I... We can, we can see you now. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's probably because of the, the cam. Uh, that's, that's from Mandy. We'll, we'll hang around, we'll do a little bit of a, a chat first before we get into talking about the main part of the video. I know I'm going to be a little bit dark. I've tried to play with the settings as best I can. I'll improve this over time. I'm just still trying to get this right because it's tricky being outdoors uh, and getting the settings right. You have different conditions all the time. We've got cloud cover and then it goes sunny as the, as the clouds go past and it tricks the camera up. This isn't like a, a fantastic intelligent camera. But I have been playing around with GoPro, and that might be a better solution if I use a GoPro as a cam. But I haven't got to that stage yet because of technical things that I won't bore you with. We'll just uh, hang on a little bit and see how we go. Okay, thanks, Mark. I'm doing fine. Kevin Smith, Mark, I have tomatoes coming up from last year that I'm not sure if they are Roma or Cherry. How can you tell the difference? You might be able to tell the difference just by the flowers. Sometimes the flowers are smaller on Cherry than the larger tomatoes. So you could check that out. Sometimes Cherry tomatoes are more bushier. They have a, uh, a thinner stems um, than, than the thick Roma or beefsteak type tomato plants. So you can tell a little bit like that. But either way, it's going to be a nice surprise, isn't it? G'day, Brandy. G'day, Sky. Yeah, I have got chat moderators. So we, we I have a number of them now. G'day, Isabel from Quebec. So I'm assuming I can see myself on the screen. So I'm assuming you guys can see me okay. Uh, apart from that sun washing the background and making me darker every now and again. But we'll just persist with it. G'day, Josh from South Australia. Tennessee, April. G'day, Peter, Dominican Republic. Crikey, you guys are everywhere. So I'm a lot more relaxed with this one, even though technically it's still not fantastic. I'm not a perfectionist. It's that. Don't get me wrong with that. I'm far from a perfectionist. You should see the experiments I do in the backyard. But what I what I do worry about is wasting people's time more than anything. And that is the thing that concerns me and sort of gets me a little bit anxious is that um, not, not that things aren't going perfect or that things are, are wrong or that I might make a fool of myself or anything like that. I mean, you should see my videos. I make a fool of myself just about all the time. But... Uh, and I enjoy doing it too. But I'm more relaxed today because I, I'm not on that mobile phone and I can see more, even though I've still got my glasses on. If I can make that writing bigger, I'm using the generic YouTube app at the moment. Maybe I go to OBS or something like that. And so this is the thing I've got to learn. And, and you'd say, well, Mark, why didn't you have all this squared away? Well, time is a factor. I'm very busy. Uh, 
trying to get to keep this garden growing, which is fantastic, um, which is great fun, and also bringing content, and, and then running a household. I'm still a home dad. So doing all those things is pretty hectic. Lots of engagements now. You know, over a million subscribers, you tend to get busier on YouTube. Uh, lots of people want a piece out of you, which is all good. I love it all. It's all fun. Hear those birds going over? A couple of lorikeets. Beautiful. I love the morning in the garden here. It's the best time. Yeah, so, <clears throat> yeah, I'm pretty, pretty busy. And now I just lost my train of thought. That's that's life for you, isn't it? <clears throat> but oh, my, my setup here is um is it makes it a lot more comfortable. You know, I've got a drink. Did you see my Instagram post? You'll see exactly what my setup is. I've got you guys sitting on this on this blue drum. I've got a umbrella on a star picket on some PVC piping. Uh, so I've got the PC, I've got a cam, uh, I've got a wireless mic. Obviously, um, uh, you, uh, you guys are able to hear me, so that's good. I've tested all this, but you can only do so much. And, yeah, that's what I was talking about. So I've just got to jump in, and that's what I'd recommend people do. Uh, don't be too self-conscious, especially about life in general. Um, yes, there are certain things that you, you have to practice and make sure you've got right, I get that, you know, if you're a dentist or something like that. But if you're uh, public speaking or if you um, want to go into a public role or if you just want to do something for yourself, get into the garden and you haven't got a clue, the best thing to do is just get in there and, and go for it. Make mistakes, muck around. Sure, do as much research as you can if you've got the time. If you haven't got the time, get a, a couple of containers, whack some plants in there and learn from it and see how you go and enjoy yourself. You will make mistakes. Things, you know, won't go your way all the time, but sometimes you'll have some great um, wins. Keltoid 5, $10, howdy from Arizona. See, I could catch that super chat then. How cool is that? Because it's going through quite slowly. Okay, now let me, now we've got, you know, a few more people here. Let me uh, start off with talking about, now I'm not going to be an alarmist um, because that's not my style, but I do need to talk about, you know, the, st the, the video and what I've set it up for just for the first bit. Let's only go for maybe an hour or just over today. Let's not drag this out too much. And also... I will answer some Q&A. So we'll do a little bit about talking about inflation and rising food prices and how self-sufficiency can help us with that. And then we'll do some a lot more Q&A and I'll get into answering questions, trying to read super chats out. Um, Tommy said, you started me at least trying to grow, not doing too bad. Good stuff. Well done. And uh, yeah, so... Let's just get into now talking about the world as it is. Um, you've got to be careful when you're doing YouTube and when you're live. You've got to be a little bit guarded because there are people out there that um, that want to take that want to take you down. And there's there's also a lot of um, there's organisations like the corporate media, for example, and government that that don't want people like myself uh, talking or spreading things that they disagree with. Uh, they don't want me to have an opinion and share that opinion with lots of people. They want me to sort of, uh, it's okay if I, if I spin exactly what they want, that's fine. But if I go out of that realm, uh, then, then they come down on you like a ton of bricks. And I've seen that with a lot of other creators. I'm not going to fall into that trap. So if I'm guarded a little bit and talk in, in a few riddles, that's just to get around some of those, those issues. Um, I'm just being honest with you guys as much as I possibly can. When I do my writing, when I get back into my writing a little bit more on my blog, I'm, a, I'm a quite a bit more frank um, with what I say and, and how I put things. But 
at the moment, I don't think there's any big emergency, but you can see a few signs of problems with food prices going up here in Australia and in the US as well. The two main things on the news at the moment, gas prices going up, and that's for certain reasons, um, certain problems that are, that are, that are happening. Um, CV around the world is causing a lot of problems and that's causing problems with supply. Uh, for example, I just got a new mower. It's a Toro, a 50 inch, and I was extremely lucky to get hold of that uh, for a number of reasons. I'm gonna do a video on that um, down the track as well. Um, I really like my Toros, I've had three. They're a US brand, they're a big brand. But I was talking to someone in the company um, pretty pretty high up here in, in Australia. And they were saying that supply problems, I, I got the last 50 inch around this area. And the supply, they're, they're so, they were so difficult to get mowers in that they were hiring refrigerated containers. Now you don't need a refrigerated container to put mower parts and mowers in but that was all that was kind of left. And they were double the price of hiring a refrigeration container than the standard container. But they were willing to do that to get these mowers moving because otherwise people just can't get their mowers, they can't get their parts. Consequence of that, and this is just an example, because there's many other examples of other things, food and computers and other stuff. The consequence is that prices have to go up because they're paying more to get this stuff in and then they've got to pass that on to the customer so that that is the type of of issue and, and it's all because of cv uh, mostly and the the world turbulence at the moment certain countries aren't playing the game certain countries are a bit jack what we call that jack in australia a bit uh, arrogant and 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 not pulling their weight or being a bit nasty um, and those type of things can make a big difference. Here in Australia, we've got a problem with farmers not being able to get enough people to pick their produce. And that then means that food either gets dug back into the ground or it becomes more expensive because it costs more money to be able to get those pickers in or the farmers have to try to do it themselves. And it, prices go up because of that. If, there, if food gets dug back into the ground, well, then there's a shortage of certain food and that puts prices or pressure on prices as well. Now, I'm not saying um, we're gonna have a huge crisis here in the world, um, but what I'm saying is, as this setup, is that if you are a bit self-sufficient and you've got a veggie garden or even just a nice herb garden because of a bunch of herbs from a supermarket can cost you two to three dollars or more and that might rise who knows so if you if you are a bit self-sufficient you could save money but not just save money you'll have it at hand as well and i don't i mean it depends on your motivation um let me just read that there mark did you find the cherry bushes i haven't yet no no i haven't kp um I haven't looked into it, but I will. But thanks for that. Um, yeah, so so if your motivation is to save money, which a lot of people, when I first started gardening here, going down to one income, me becoming a home dad, Nina working, it was a big motivating factor, was to save money, save costs on the grocery bill. But then it turned quickly into more than that. It turned into mental health, helping me physically. Uh, it turned into showing children where food came from. It turned into a learning tool. You know, it turned into um, physical, uh, instead of having to work out in the gym or anything like that, I was getting a lot of, and I still do, a lot of working out, digging uh, plants and digging in the garden and walking around the garden or tending to the poultry. So there was a heck of a lot of benefits, even more, a lot more than that. 
but there's just some off the cuff. So your motivation might start out with saving money and then move on to so many of these other health benefits. And then people say, well, how can you save money? You've got these raised garden beds and you've empire built and they all cost money. And so you've got this outlay. Um, but when you, I'm like, my umbrella just about lifted out. Because the wind has come up. I'm going to have to fix that too and make sure that doesn't fly away. Uh, so when you when you then when you then um, factor in your health benefits and say and the learning factor for your children and all those other benefits that come into it, the organic produce, how that's healthier for you to eat rather than pesticide full or uh, pesticide laced vegetables or or you know, fumigation laced vegetables that have been at the supermarket sitting on the shelf and they fumigate around it and it settles on the veggies, that type of thing. If you're factoring all that, well, and the health benefits, the exercise, and that perhaps you're saving thousands and thousands more because of those extra health benefits over the long term, even though you might be outlaying money for garden beds and all that. The last thing I want to say about the inflation and the rising cost of food. I think you're going to see this um, coming in the short term. We might be able to fix it as a world uh, and get back on track after the CV is gone and people are, uh, are fixed up from it and the, and the world's back on track and maybe conflict and all that dies down. Hopefully um, the, the supply chains can all get back on track and prices can come down and, you know, people start coming back into countries, being able to labour and pick veggies. I mean, that's all good. But the last thing it does is if you've got a small garden or a big garden or some fruit trees, is it gives you peace of mind. So if there's no crisis or if there's no worries um, at the moment it like or over time, you still have the peace of mind to know that as I'm growing all this stuff, if something does happen, well, I'm self-sufficient in something. I'm self-sufficient in, in veggies and carrots or in oranges and fruit. And that can that peace of mind can really help lower your stress levels overall. So there is a lot packed in there, a lot of reasons why um, growing your own veg and growing your own food, fruit and veg, and keeping some chickens and poultry and getting some eggs, all that simple stuff you can do. There's a lot of good things that can come out of it that you might not realise. And uh, I think this volatile time in the world, not being scaremongering, uh, it's a good thing to get into. Um, so, yeah, like I always say, get into it. Yeah. All right, let me have a drink. <clears throat> and I haven't been reading any comments or anything, but I'll get into it. Behind me, you can see those dead bushes over here. They're actually Jerusalem artichokes. I can just dig that there. And they're pushing out of the soil. They just pull the roots and the tubers and pushed up. You've got all these wonderful tubers here. Can you see that? You can eat it raw. I prefer it pickled, but of course you can cook it up too. We'll probably have, I reckon, 15 or 20 kilos at least of Jerusalem artichoke to harvest over soon. And I would recommend Harvest it in small quantities if you're going to eat it and cook it up. If you're going to pickle it, yeah, harvest it all out and pickle it. And it'll last ages uh, pickled or fermented and it'll keep its crunch. But if you just pull it all out of the ground and, and leave it in the crisper in the fridge or something or on a bench, it goes soggy and, and, and it, it doesn't go off, but it goes soft really quickly. 
But if you leave it in the ground and just harvest as much as you need, for some reason it stays hard in the ground. Yeah, interesting trick with Jerusalem artichoke. Behind me here are some peas. These are organic um, dwarf pea. I only get about that high. So I've just got a small little trellis here. And they're a uh, heirloom variety too, which means fruiter type. So they're heirloom dwarf pea. And uh, I can't recall growing them before. So I'm keen to see how they go and then I'm going to keep the seed. But it's good to have a small dwarf plant of anything because they're easier to manage. All right, let's get into a, um, a bit of Q&A. Oh, we can also talk about inflation and food prices and all that as well if you're, if you're interested. Um, I'll start from down here. So, that I, I mean, it's on go, go slow. Jay Davis, good afternoon from Kentucky, USA. G'day, mate. Mark, thank you for keeping your live stream, streaming on YouTube. It's easy to get notifications. I'm on Grow How. Hey, how are you, mate? I'm growing dwarf French beans at the moment. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I don't think these are a French from from memory, but um, yeah, yeah. They, I just remember they were a dwarf, but they're heirloom. Uh, are we affected by wood prices here? Not so much. <laughs> We're getting some renovations done soon, and my builder has said that uh, prices are negligible up at this stage. Um, and he's a, he's a good bloke too, uh, Marty, and he knows his stuff and he's not going to bum drum me. I've known him for years and he's done some really great renos. But that bed there behind us is our old decking. And he'd done our back deck here last year. It came up magic and because it was falling. It was dangerous. Um, and, yeah, it was a lot of it in that. And I'm going to do the front deck as well. So we, we, we're going to be spending a lot of money on wood renos soon. Hopefully the prices won't go through the roof. Um, Graham, many thoughts on growing mushrooms? I... I I, I did a video on mushrooms a few years back, getting harvesting them wild, which I wouldn't recommend unless you know exactly what you're doing. And, uh, yeah, this time of year, you can grow mushrooms pretty easily. if You can get the mushroom kits, and it's always good to have a go and have some fun doing it. I haven't yet. Um, but it's not saying that I won't get into it. I have investigated growing mushrooms and getting mushroom spores and that type of thing. Particularly, I think certain oyster mushrooms grow best here uh, in our subtropics through the winter time mainly, but I haven't looked into it that much, so um, I don't know a lot about it. But I think if you like mushrooms, like really love them, you've got to get into investigating it, Google it, find out who's selling mushrooms and mushroom kits or or spores or inoculate logs and get into it because you'd get a lot of satisfaction out of growing your own mushies, that's for sure. Um, the, you know, the, the proper ones you eat, not the ones that make it. I wouldn't recommend them. Is there a vegetable that, I say, Melissa, is there a vegetable that uh, you, how do I stop this? Oh, sorry, I just missed that. I'll get better at this. Tom, never fail to relax me. Your enthusiasm is much appreciated. Thanks, Tom. It's good to see the comments zooming through, mind you, even though it's on go slow, uh, because that means people are engaging. And, you know, I love that. Um, and, and I'll do my best. Uh, of course, I've got this live chat. I read through it after this as well.
funky uncle said, what vegetable is us yielding that you grow? Um, well, that's a good question. Highest yielding. Maybe, maybe tomatoes. Um, as far as, you know, getting successive crops out of it through the season. Um, but, you know, it just depends. It depends how much you grow. If I grow a big bed of sweet potato and then you, you dig that out, you've got sweet potatoes to plant for the next time. And then you've got sweet potatoes for ages. Like the pumpkin vine behind me there, you'll see it here, just the edge of it. That thing has been going for nearly 12 months. I just can't bring myself to, to cut it down because it's still producing. There's pumpkins after pumpkins. I've been giving them away. My sister's been making pumpkin soup. I've pureed it. Um, the kids are sick of pumpkin. But, you know, they last for a long time so we can store them. Uh, but, yeah, I think we're all getting a bit sick of pumpkin. And that's so highly yielding, the Kent, Japanese pumpkin. A really great pumpkin variety to grow. And, you know, it's an heirloom too, so you just grow it over and over. So, but, yeah, I think anything you could make a high yielding, heaps of lettuce, lettuce is easy to grow, um, and you could succession crop it. Um, so anything really if you've got the space. If you've got small space... Uh, I think you want to go for hard hitting crops like like chilies and herbs, you know, like hot peppers, because then you don't need a lot to add to a meal. You add some chilies, one chili to a dish, and you can enhance the flavor. So you can have some pretty boring staples like potatoes and rice, you know, something pretty basic, something pretty cheap that you buy. And then you can enhance it. If you're living in an apartment, you can enhance it by just a few chilies plucked off. A, a little chili bush and and flavor your food with it and really make a bland an ordinary meal into something sensational with just a few herbs and some chilies so it just depends i think it's but it is a good question g'day jenny from north carolina yeah that's uh, thanks mandy for answering that so it's so good to have some moderators uh, able to also answer some questions. Have you, um, let me, slow mode is on. Eggshells have helped a little to keep cats out of the garden. Well, I wouldn't have known that, but if it works, Go for it. <laughs> Sarah, I'm growing in Newfoundland. A very different climate, but also a former jail colony. <laughs> Seth, loving your channel from the US police state. Oh, <laughs> uh, jeeps. Thanks, Marvin. Suggestions for shade cloth uh, crops. Collards are doing well, but radishes and spinach is struggling. They yeah, might do because you got radish is a root crop. Uh, though it's got big leaves, um, it's still going to have some trouble if it's not getting enough sun. And spinach, well, yeah, it probably does need a fair bit of sun too to to grow well. You can grow lettuce. Um, passion fruit grows well in the shade if you're in a decent, warm enough climate. Um, but really, there's not a lot that grows fantastic in the shade, but most things will grow okay in the shade. So better than nothing often. Um, if you've got a space, uh, and rather than putting big, large garden beds in, if you've, it's, it might be better to like if you've got a small space and you're trying to chase the sun do exactly that growing containers put some rollers on it or put it on a cart and then as the the the, the time of year changes follow the sun to maximize the sun exposure 
and you can still grow lots of food in small containers and uh, make it mobile and move them around like that, make it nice and easy, rather than one big garden bed in a spot and then you're running out of sun. Hidden harvest grow lights, long time sub. Thank you very much for that. Well, thanks for being a long time sub as well, subscriber. And there you go, Mandy's into it. <clears throat> I haven't tried grow lights um, yet, but it's some project that I'm interested in trying down the track, growing a little bit inside, testing things and bringing that information to you guys. Long time subscriber, CS from Vegas. What would you suggest the way to so Yellow Jack? What would you suggest the way to get the best use of quarter acre? I was thinking potatoes and chickens for eggs. What else would you do? Quarter acre is huge. It's that's a lot of space. If you look at my patch here, I know you can't see the whole lot of it. If you have a look at some of the videos where I show the whole thing, only about 15 metres across and probably 35 back or maybe 40. And it's situated right in the middle of, of our property. Around it's a whole heap of gum trees. We've got fruit trees to the left here and fruit trees everywhere. I can fit them around the property. But essentially the veggie side of it isn't that huge. It wouldn't be a quarter acre, I don't think, of veggie garden. And we can grow heaps heaps of vegetables in that space so yes potatoes of course is a staple and it's it's like rice but rice is harder to grow of course because it needs specific conditions and water and all that whereas potatoes if you grow a heap of potatoes they store for a long time and that's why it's one of the most important crops in the world potatoes corn rice but corn and potatoes are really easy to grow speaking of inflation before i heard in the us that corn prices were 50% up or something. So, you know, you grow a good harvest of corn, you actually could be saving a bit of money this season with those prices continue to rise. Love your channel, Anna Butler, uh, for the scorching heat in Texas in summer. Let me see if I can click on that. Love your channel, so helpful for the scorching heat here in Texas in the summer. Well, yeah, yeah, well, that's the thing. You know, people tend to try to follow um, people, you know, gardeners and that, that are on their own climate. You don't have to do that. I've learned from gardeners all around the world in really cold climates, even though I live in a warm climate. Don't just discount that. And, yeah, we are fairly related in the fact that Texas can get warm. Um I think it get pretty cold too, can't it? Wasn't there just something earlier this year? You guys went through a fair bit of storms and cool weather. But um, how do I get this back? Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. But uh, let me get some more questions. Californian here, a villa, bought a raised garden bed. Good on you. You are the citrus king. Hey, I, I, uh, I wouldn't know if I'm the, no. We grow a heck of a lot of citrus and we love eating citrus. And at the moment, this is the prime year for citrus. I don't think I could not try anything and grab the camera. I could grab you behind the ears here and twist you around. Do I try it? I'll give it a go. You just have a look at this honey murkot over here. I hope you don't mind me grabbing you by the ears. Turn you over there. Can you see the honey murkot in the distance? That, I'll tell you what, there's two things about a honey murkot. A, they're a bugger to peel. So you just can't, like an imperial, you can just peel it and a lot of other mandarins and oranges, you can peel them quite easily. Honey murkot, 
you can't you're just ripping flesh out when you're trying to peel the skin off it drives you crazy but the taste magic and actually they juice really good so yeah but the we got all our citrus is going good i mean we got limes and lemons all year round here but the, now the now the oranges and the mandarins are coming into play and some of the other varieties of limes that we've got and the natives yeah that's why i hardly ever get a cold because we're always eating vitamin c let me have a look at that super chat australian homestead channel sweeney's creek farm australian homestead channel from bendigo victoria we love your channel mark congrats on your success julie ann and steve thanks guys and uh, so a shout out there to the australian homestead channel sweeney's creek farm thanks for that guys I'm just reading the comments here. I'm not stunned by it or anything like that. Speaking of citrus, are the leaves what I need to use as a natural repellent? The peel doesn't seem to work that well for me. I don't know. I wouldn't know. You know, it's, pe it's pretty pungent. Um, leaves aren't that pungent. Unless you're, you've got a lime, one of those um, uh, kaffir limes, you know, use them in cooking. I've got two of those, and they are excellent for cooking Thai cuisine. A very pungent leaf. Yeah, yeah. The um, the birds in the background. I'm, I'm glad that you're picking up on some of that because it is really nice and this is one of the reasons why i'm fighting all the elements and the technical problems to to bring you out into the garden as a live stream i just couldn't i mean maybe one day i'm going to have to do it from inside of it's hammering down but i'm still thinking i might do it from the back deck if possible and have you at least looking over the the backyard because i just don't want to be doing this in the office I mean, we've got the sun on my face, uh, listening to the birds. I mean, great company. Um, you know, life doesn't get better than that, as far as I'm concerned. So I'm glad that it's coming through on the mic. Got another live chat. Uh, a, uh, not another live chat here. Got a super chat. Um, Crystal Adcock, watching from USDA Zone 8 southern usa here love your channel thank you crystal hi from germany i'm just being smashed with house mice my seeds are no more oh that's no good ryan thanks to your previous video i have new one starting again uh, contained in a large translucent box oh yeah Okay, hello from Carnarvon Gorge, Queensland. Yeah, we've got a mice plague in some parts of Australia at the moment, and it really is devastating, uh, especially for farmers, but yeah, for ha home gardeners as well. But yeah, that is yeah, it is a way to do it. You've got to protect those seedlings, uh, and you can do it through exclusion. Exclusion, and that sun is washing me out a bit. But yeah, exclusion and netting, um, those types of things, maybe even studying them indoor on a sunny ledge if you can. But whatever way, the mice will eventually pass and your seedlings will keep growing and then you plant them out. But you don't want to just, they'll even dig up your seedlings. They'll dig them up, they'll sniff them and dig them all up. Yeah, so you've got to combat that somehow. But if you're keeping an eye on your, on your seedlings and your crops, you usually can see like i said this in my seedling visit video the other day you can usually tell and get onto it before it devastates your crop but i don't know how these farmers are going to do it and that again adds into the higher cost of food you have these events that come through 
the CV, which slows supply down and harder to get workers because you know certain factors mean that they're not interested in getting a job at this stage, and and or you can't get people into the country to pick veggies because it's a tough job. I, I did strawberry picking once for ten hours before I joined the army, and I tell you what, I reckon that was harder than the army. Using a little scissors, I did I did eight hours of of picking strawberries, and I think my paycheck after that day, after calluses and sore fingers, I was only about 15, 16. I think my paycheck was about $2.70. Never again. I like picking my own strawberries. That's good, and harvesting my own veggies, but I don't think I could do it for a living. It's tough. And so, yeah, when you've got these events where people are inclined not to, um, then you've got inflation and you've got, You've got pressures on prices. And if you're growing your own, I'm going to keep saying it, it takes a lot of that pressure, not only off your food bill, as in monetarily, but a lot of, um, it, it, it's, it's, less, it's less stress because you know you've got those things when you need them. You don't have to go seeking them. They're not sold out. And you're not, the stress levels are staying moderate. See, I didn't factor in the sun just dropping like that during this live stream, and I could have maybe prevented that, but you're just going to have to see me in the shining light. I have an indoor aquaponic garden. So far, lettuce and squash and tomatoes are doing great. Still an ongoing experiment. That's interesting. Oh, good stuff. So is it under lights? I'd assume. If not, um, it's it's sort of natural light coming through into it. But there you go. And experimenting is, like I always say, is the way to go. Experiment and see what you can do. You just never know. And it's part of all the fun. Mark, have you... Oh, this is from Mark, Mark. Mark, have you ever grown potatoes from true seed? From true potato seed? Uh, no, I haven't. Vivienne Chanel? No, I haven't. I haven't tried it. I have had our potatoes flour, uh, go to flour, but I haven't tried actually growing them from seed. I don't know if that's very easy to do. Um, that's probably why I haven't never tried it. I've got a feeling from memory that it's quite a difficult thing and you're not quite sure what you might actually get from those potato seed. I'm looking for questions here. There's a lot of people talking between themselves. That's great to see. It is a good community here, a good gardening community here on YouTube. Yeah, cockatoos are common here. Tried growing garlic indoors, but it failed. Yeah, yeah, try a different type of garlic. Yeah. Any natural treatment of aphids? You live in Toowoomba. That's my hometown, Toowoomba. I was born in Toowoomba. Um, well, mix a bit of oil. Um, I can't remember the exact off the top of my head, but say about an inch of oil in a container like this, say a spray can, um, a little bit of detergent and a little dash of water. You spray that over the aphids. It's not going to harm your plants or anything, but it'll suffocate them. While well, I've got it here, I might as well have a drink of it. So, um, yeah, I did a 10, I think it was 10 pesticides or 10, not pesticides, 10 natural ways to, organic ways to combat pests in the garden. Have a look at that video, do a search on my channel, go to the video channel, the video side of it, then hit the little search, not the top YouTube search, and search for um, pesticides or, or organic ways to treat pests or 10 ways to treat pests organically or something like that, and that should come up. And any videos that I've done in that area should come up.
Okay, I better do this super chat. Hello from Tamworth, New South Wales. Fear Tech. G'day, mate. Tamworth, top town. Um, Nicole, how do you feel about indoor potted plants for decoration? Do you have any? Oh, yeah. I, I don't, we have some of those shade plants, a nice big one inside that gets a little, maybe a tiny bit of morning sun through a window, but it, it sort of takes up a nice large size of the window. It's between two lounge chairs. Very soothing. I do. I like indoor plants. I like ornamentals too. Um, ornamental plants can be companion plants. Ornamentals that flower. We've built onto bushland here and the, that, that enables us to get the benefits of those bush types of ornamentals, or not ornamentals, but those bush types of plants, like the eucalyptus and the, the natural, and even some of the weeds that might grow in the bush, they will then bring through pollinators into the garden and small animals and birds that eat grubs and pests. But yeah, ornamentals inside, that can help as well. They can, I know people can grow other food plants inside as, as, as indoor plants, like avocados do quite well indoors for a certain period of time, I suppose, and might be able to keep them pruned. But yeah, yeah, I'm not adverse to ornamentals or indoor plants. I just love veggie growing, and I've been replacing a lot of um, kind of, not natives, but I've been putting more natives in the garden, but replacing sort of ornamental shrubs as they die back or we don't like them. I've been replacing them with fruit trees around our whole property where possible and where I can't, where say it's too boggy or too wet, I will plant natives around those parts of the property and that just, it, it, it enhances the corridor from the outside bushland and coming in and attracts all those good beneficial animals to the property. Casey, uh, advice on growing apple seeds from ap apple trees from seed? Well, you can. Apples strike quite easily from seed, but you're not sure what you're going to get. That is the only issue. It's like most fruit trees. Citrus grow pretty easy from seed as well. But again, if it's already been a manipulated species and, you, you, and grafted, say, you're... you're you're running a risk of growing something that might take a long time to fruit to begin with before that tree matures as opposed to a, a grafted tree that you know what you're getting, which can fruit within a couple of years, if not first year. Um, but then you know, it might get lucky and it, it, it could be true to type. There are certain trees like mangoes come to mind that some of them are very true to type and you can grow them from seed and Within a few years, they can be fruiting. But, yeah, you've got to pick, pick them right, and you are running a bit of a risk growing apples from, from seed. That's the only thing I'll say about it. Probably better off getting, a if you want apples, getting some good grafted varieties that, you know, they're not that expensive, $20, $30. We started with that with all our trees. We, that pays you dividends for 20 30 50 years, whatever, um, you definitely get your money back. Thanks, Michael. Great video. Thanks. Michael. Michael Abbott. Thanks, mate. Noah said, Mark, just received my prong tool. Thanks so much for showing it to all of us. Yeah, no worries. There's a special going here in Australia at the moment. Uh, Peter wants to get rid of the smaller prong, the utility prong. And so he's been, it's about 40 bucks off or something when you factor in my discount that I give anyone that, that goes through my link. And that's in the description below to get there, but it's an Australian one. You've got to go to the Australian prong website. They still sell the prongs overseas in Europe and also in the US. Um, 
Peter works tirelessly. He's 75 or 76. He invented the prong. Um, really nice, nice old fella. Um, very passionate about customer service and keeping his prong going. And uh, <laughs> that didn't come across too well, did it? Keeping his prong going. <laughs> it, does, it sounds a bit awful when you think of it like that. But no, um, I like working with him and I like promoting that particular garden tool. Uh, so yeah, he's got a, it's not a two for one deal, but if you buy the son of prong, which is the, the medium sized blue one, you get um, a, a, a fair bit of money, like 40 bucks off or something for the, and get the, the utility prong along with it. Um, and I've also got a little ad running on my website that, that links to it. So if you go to an article, go through, I've been, I've got some, some, an ad program on my website now that I can run, um, not necessarily sponsors, but I could do sponsors, but it's more like a, any, anyone that I'm affiliated with that I could try to promote. Um, I can now do that with that new software, which is pretty cool. So I intend to do that more. I've got to get writing more on my blog first and I intend to do that. But yeah, the prong, yeah, it's a, it's a good garden tool and it's a good story behind it, which is what I like. I like small businesses. I like people that work hard and tirelessly to promote their things and to make the world a better place. I'm not, adver I'm not adverse corporate, not much. Uh, there's still a role for them to play and I'm not going to just corporate bash for the sake of it. They do a lot of good, but I'm just saying sometimes they can drop the ball um, and forget the humanity uh, and get a bit greedy. And sometimes they can squash small people, maybe without even knowing it. And uh, that, 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 that sort of suppresses the good ideas that some people have. And, and that's why I like to highlight some hardworking small businesses that have good products and good ideas over maybe mainstream products because I just think everyone should have a fair go. And uh, if I can promote it in a small way um, and do my best to do that, I will. Trying to read the comments here. I'm getting a bit of glare. Billy May says, fake gas shortage, just like the fake food story shortage. Well, maybe you're listening to too much fake news, mate. Zach, the goings on now, I've got my wife on board with uh, turning sod into a garden bed. <laughs> Seeds are shot now, but thankful she's on board. Didn't want to do it without supporting her doing it. Cool. Is farming fish practical? I don't know. Um, I haven't tried it. I like fishing. I think that that's pretty practical. Go out fishing, have some fun. Uh, if you catch a good catch, well, then that can pay for your fuel. We just had fish three nights in a row from what we caught out in the bay the other day. And that, so the fish we caught paid for the fuel because, you know, you're looking at mackerel, snapper, and some tarwine some really good quality fish. We got three big meals plus a lunch. I made cold fish sangers for the boys for lunch. So I mean, four meals really, uh, feeding the whole family. Then with food from out of the garden and even the lemons to squeeze over it from the garden, you, you, 
it's not only satisfaction, it's not only fun, but the fish are out there, they're already grown for you, so you don't have to feed them. Uh, but yeah, if you're farming them in the backyard, uh, you'd have to ask someone who's into aquaponics and fish farming and growing veggies through that system. I think it's very interesting, but I can't tell you from experience that it that it's cost effective or that it that it's really easy or hard or what. I just I I'm a garden bed soil grower, uh, but I do find aquaponics and hydroponics quite interesting, for sure. And especially if you're using fish for the fertilizer and have that recycled type system um but whether or not it's totally sustainable and, and that you'll have to ask those guys i want to ask leslie i want to ask again about my ungrafted pear tree i have a lot of new growth coming up at the base should i leave it or clip get rid of it i would say because it's just you want to develop it from the top all that new growth from the base is is excess growth and it's going to turn the tree ugly as well and it's going to take that. Um, it's going to take the the energy away from the main stem with your main branches, where the fruit's going to come on. Those those smaller branches coming from the base. If it's a grafted tree, it's a real no-no because that's sucker growth from the roots, and you don't want that. But if it's a non-grafted tree, well then it's still bad because you, you're going to get an odd-looking tree that's uh, oddly shaped and probably not going to produce very well so get rid of it and shape it properly and then shape it nicely like an hourglass if you can or a spalliot or whatever you want to do with it but but the, you're going to get better management out of uh, out of growing it not like a bush if it's not a supposed to be a bush i have got some experience with this i've tried bushing out a few trees olives was one that i tried earlier on by letting it bush from the stem very short. And the thought was I could grow it like a bush rather than a big stem and then out. And it, it, it turns the tree a bit fickle. And it's not, it's not it, in theory, you're getting a smaller tree and a bushed out tree and then you've got fruit and it's easier to manage and harvest. But in practice, it doesn't really work that way. You're better off with a a tree with a strong stem straight up it's easier to manage it's easier to, to mow around or or weed around when it's like that and then it's a stronger tree all up and it fruits better and then you can just trim it from the top and it looks better too All right, I'll probably wrap it up in another five or ten minutes. I'm sure you don't want me totally just rambling on, but I will get through a few more questions. Um, how about self-sufficient beer? Sebastian? I think I, think I said this last week. My brother-in-law, he, he does his own beer, and uh, it really is good. Something about home-brewed beer. Do I have a video on harvesting seeds from your own garden? Yeah, there is. Uh, I did a seed, a seed series of five videos um, a couple of years back, and so you can still Google that or search on my YouTube channel in the video section and use the little search icon rather than the big YouTube one, and go for type in seed saving and you'll come up with those videos. I, I did, I think it was five separate videos because I covered different types of seeds and also I covered cuttings as well. So many messages, Mark, you want to keep up. No, I'm not keeping up. I'm just trying my best <laughs> to, to, to to do it, I apologise if I'm not answering your questions and seeing them fly by. I've still, I've got it in slow mode, um, and I'm battling the elements and the glare, and so are you, because I can see that I'm blowing out here, 
but because of the sun now on my scone. But uh, we can only do our best, guys. And like I said, I will try to improve little bit by little bit every time. I'm trying to grow eggplant, Gavin. So Gavin says, hi, Mark, I'm trying to grow eggplant fairy tales in a pot in a partly sunny spot on a balcony, but the fruit seems to go from purple to yellow. And then I lost it. And I can't drag that down. I'll learn how to do that. Yeah, the, if it goes from purple to yellow, it's probably ripening. Um, usually when they go to that yellow colour, they're starting to over-ripen. So I'd, I'd pick them at the purple. And then if they go to yellow, you could harvest them, let them go on and grow on, pick it and, let it, and use it for seed for next season. Or if you've got the season still in hand, you can even try planting them quickly and get another plant out of them. But, uh, yeah, you definitely don't want to leave eggplants sit too long because they can get uh, woody and not as nice to eat, but they will, a, a sign that they're overripe is when they do change colour. I'm going to try to keep this live streaming every Thursday at around the same time and my time here at nine, if I can, of course, pending illness or catastrophe or something like that. I'll let you guys know. But yeah, at the moment, I know I struggle a bit here and there, but I'm like I said before, rather than trying to practice and get perfect, I'm just jumping full in and we'll learn along the way and we'll get better at it. And, uh, you know, something's better than nothing. And that's what I, that's what it's, you know, that's what I always say. I say to my kids, um, don't let fear hold you back. Just get in there, do it and get good at it. I mean, this is how I started YouTube. It's how I started my garden. I didn't, uh, I didn't say, well, I haven't got a clue. So I'm going to have to just keep studying and, 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 and putting it off until I feel like I'm really competent and then get out and do it because by then it's a couple of years down the track and yeah, sometimes the best way to learn is just to get in there and do it and then uh, you also you're studying at the same time or you're trying to find out things and research things as you go along and do you're creating uh, yeah you know what i mean G'day, Mark. I'm going to come up for a question for this live, but just wanted to say hello and thank you for all the help so far with self-sufficiency from the Gen Z growers. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers from Texas. Thanks for the great content. Um, snow, sh snow neck snow. Remember, what's that? Um, Sky neck show. Thanks, mate. What's the what's the best free video editing software that you'd recommend? I use Vegas, Vegas Pro. I mean, Movie Maker. That's that's still pretty good, um, but I, there's their DaVinci. That's free, isn't it? And there's probably some others. I um, my son uses Adobe because that that's the that's then no, no, that's you can't get that for free. I don't think um, or any free versions to you might be able to get a trial. Um, but yeah, there are lots of software. There's, there's lots of software out there now. There's lots of mobile software out there too that might be a bit cheaper and easier to edit on. Um, but no, I'm not a I'm not a big expert in video editing software olivia thanks i'm a noob here just starting 17 rows on our property i'm 31 first time homeowner with 10 acres i'll be waiting if i wait until i knew more i'd never start wishing luck to all great advice 
succinctly what I was trying to say for about five minutes. I know this sounds crazy, but we've got to start somewhere. Yeah. Saute some Sereno peppers with anything. You become a true VD chili. <laughs> Unknown direction. Hello, big fan. G'day. What was your job before YouTube? Sam's gardening. Um, I was in the military, so I was in the army for 21 years. I enjoyed it, uh, but it came time to to move on. My last job was a squadron sergeant major, so I was running people for physical training i'm injured myself I've got a few nasty injuries on account of my service uh, it's hard to get through the military unscathed because it's a pretty dangerous job um, but it is a very rewarding career and i've got a lot of respect for people in all the forces and all the services that uh yeah it, it's it's not easy but it certainly is very rewarding um, that's that's the main thing I can say about it. So if anyone's considering joining the military or the police force or, you know, nursing and those uh, fireys, those type of service industries, um, definitely, yeah, I would recommend it um, as long as, you know, you, th you feel like you're a fit for it. But, yeah, it, it can be quite taxing. I could do 21 years and I thought that was enough for me. And I needed to move on for my family's sake and my own self. Uh, my children were very young, and that's why I turned into a home dad. And I didn't initially consider a career as a content creator. Uh, it just sort of came in uh, by accident out of growing food to survive kind of thing and to make life easier for us. But also to slow life down a little bit was the other thing. Move out of the city, get into the country a bit, slow life down. And we did that for quite a while. Uh, now, life's busy as ever, but I'm enjoying immensely what I do um, by making YouTube content, chatting to you guys, uh, writing. It's and, then, and, and it's all about things that I love doing. So, yes, I, I enjoyed the military. And it helped me grow from a young fella into a man, and and it grew me grew me in so many ways, and I got a lot of satisfaction out of it. But yeah, I'm certainly enjoying what I'm doing now. Shawma, thanks for the five bucks, mate. Thank you. Hello from Eastern Washington. Belly from Oz. Hey Mark, I have too many seedlings, flowers and veggies. Just an offer if you want some. Neighbours have some already. Thanks for that. Um, I've got plenty as well, but I do appreciate you offering. Marina, hello from Florida. G'day. Hello from the countryside of Brazil, Gabrielle. Wow. G'day, mate. Shelby Henderson, I send people to your channel all the time at the garden nursery I work in. Thanks for the help, Shelley from Florida. No, thank you, and thanks for the super chat. Thanks for sending people my way as well. It's kind of um, humbling, really, that you've got someone, you know, a, a, an expert like you working at a nursery and humble Mark here, you know, growing veg and stumbling through his backyard. Um, I'm glad that I can be an influence. Um, it does make me feel kind of proud that I've been able to to grow an influence and a, and a following like that from the backyard 
and able to sort of put a lot of my stuff is a, is yes i learn a lot from you guys and i learn a lot online and on youtube as well but most of my stuff just comes from backyard experience and i like to then do all these experiments and then bring that to you and uh, the, the good and the bad and hopefully I can bring that in an entertaining way, but also in an informative way, so that helps others. And yeah, without sounding too um, sicky, you know, that that's exactly what what I probably get the most out of is that sort of satisfaction. And when you've got people in industry like nursing nurseries and stuff, and growing plants, and and wanting to interview me and wanted to talk to me from an expert side of things. It's really uh, surreal in one way. Um, I suppose I've been doing this for a long time now and I know what I'm talking about, but I still, without any formal training or anything like that, I still feel that, um, that it's, very, uh, it's very generous for those experts in the field to be calling on me for my advice and for my opinion on growing backyard food so yeah yeah it's really good lc ha how do i prepare my strawberry grow bags for winter hibernation mm, i don't know that's a good question we don't have to worry about winter hibernation here we have to worry about the summer because our strawberries grow best through the winter time here and then in summer they will put out their runners and but you've got to look after them because they get really hot and they can perish so a bit of shade cloth helps us here then you can harvest the runners and replant them uh, you know depending on the type of strawberry it is you've got bush type strawberries and you've got the runner type strawberries and the bush type strawberries are smaller but they and they can grow them from seed easier, but they 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 tend to do better through the summertime here. Um, but when you've got a cold climate, I suppose they should hibernate all right if you um, get them out of the frost, because strawberries can be susceptible to frosting. Even here, the strawberry farmers through our winter, if they know a frost is coming, we don't get many frosts. But if they do know, they will put the sprinkler systems on. And, and water them before dawn. And that will help with the leaves and the plants not freezing to death and, and perishing. Um, so I guess in a really cold climate, you might be able to put them in a, in a warmer spot or, or a way or in a glass nursery, a, a hothouse over the winter, a hoop house made with plastic over it to hibernate them through the really cold winter. Jason, retired US Navy here. Thanks for serving and thank you for producing great content. Thanks, Jason, and thanks for your service, mate. Oh, Sean, I forgot my message. <laughs> uh, tech is hard, yeah. I'm pushing 60 and started growing my own veggies for the first time in pots after watching your channel. Good on you. Well, never too late. I'm I'm pushing 60. I'm 52, something like that. But uh, yeah, yeah, growing in containers, that is one of the easiest ways to grow. And I've got plenty of container experiments going over there. I'll let you know a bit of a secret. With that fishing I was telling you about, we caught quite a bit of fish. I'm using those fish frames. I don't know if it's going to work, um, but... I think it will. I'm using the fish frames in a container. So I have done experiments before about like burying a fish head underneath a tomato plant in the garden. And I've done those videos. You can have a look at that video. But this case, I've buried some of those fish frames in a large container, something I can move around if I need to. And I've put a one tomato plant in there and we'll see how that goes. And on top of that, I've added some worms 
And my idea is that the worms are going to migrate and also hook into the fish frames. Uh, that's going to enhance the medium overall in the pot. And it's going to help that tomato plant get all the nutrients it needs. And it's hopefully going to turn into a really great big tomato plant with heaps of fruit and uh, a, an excellent video too that I can bring you guys of composting, really cycling, sustainability, uh, and all that in a container, plus growing produce, all that in one container. So let's see how we go. But I do like experimenting in containers. I'm growing strawberries in containers at the moment as well, and I have a vision for that. And I'm growing heaps of other things. Herbs are good in containers. Sometimes they can get away in the garden, like mint can get away from you in the garden bed. Well, in a container, it's contained, but you don't need a whole lot of mint. And sometimes chilies can grow much better in containers, like chilies and hot peppers. Whereas sometimes it can get a bit tricky to grow them in the garden at certain spots and certain soils. If you get a good potting mix or a good medium, you can then know exactly what soil you're growing the, the peppers in. And I, I can get really good results from growing peppers in containers, even sometimes better than in the garden bed. So yeah, uh, just because I've got plenty of space, I definitely um, wouldn't discount growing in containers myself. And so, yeah, I encourage all you guys to do that. All right, cool. All right, I think we can just about wrap it up soon, hey? <clears throat> I hope I've generated it looks by the by the comments a lot of these comments I'm reading are people talking between themselves um, and and talking about some of the issues that I've raised or not issues but some of the subjects that I've raised and that's really good it's really good because you're not just all staring at me and wondering what comes out of my lips next uh, it's it's people learning and and throwing ideas between each other and it's generating interest in gardening and food growing in particular. And, yeah, I'm just being a bit of a catalyst for that. I like answering questions, don't get me wrong and all that, but I'm going to read back through this whole live chat once this is finished and uh, get some of my own ideas and just enjoy uh, the conversation, which is what this is all about. It's this um, going live and getting you know better access uh for you guys to me but for me to you and and just having that off the cuff chat lots of um and an ahhing but you know at least at least we're we're making conversation and we're talking about something that we all love doing something we're all interested in and if you're not doing it you're considering it and i think yeah, that's, that's cool. We'll be up to 10, 18, so about an hour, an hour 20, an hour 15 minutes. And that's probably enough, I'd think. All right. Well, thanks a lot, everyone, for tuning in on this live chat and uh, this live stream. Like I said, we'll improve as we go. I'll get a better uh, webcam, something that doesn't blow me out so much. Um, hear that, hear that cockatoo? But regardless, and that's a great example, regardless of the technical problems we might have with, with sound or with the, the video blowing out and the imagery, you're getting some background noises of beautiful nature here in Australia. And uh, I'm really relaxed out in the backyard here talking to you guys. And we're facilitating that conversation about growing food in the backyard and how positive that can be. And I, I think we've, we've averaged around 800 people at any one time, 800 to 900 uh, watching me and going through and chatting and talking hang on there's one super chat i better better check out 
three wicked wiener dogs. Thank you so much for your dedication to producing your content with honest enthusiasm, creativity, and curiosity. Yeah, curiosity. Watching your videos for months inspired me to feel confident in experimenting with my own garden. Yeah, good on you. And thanks for the super chat as well. But yeah, we're inspiring each other, you know, and I really, I, I do generally believe that, um, did you hear my stomach rumbling there? I haven't eaten brekkie yet. I've been flat out getting the young fellas off to school and then coming here, setting this live thing up. But uh, yeah, yeah, In, you guys inspire me um, and I inspire some of you. And it, it's just it's the whole reciprocal thing. That's that's pretty much um, along with so many other things that make what I do so much fun and enjoyable. But, uh, yeah, I'll wrap it up there. We'll get better at this as we go. We'll keep improving just like all our gardens are improving. And uh, I'll see you probably next Thursday. Video coming up this weekend. It's going to be quite fun. I my main video camera's kaput. It just stopped working. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to do about that. Fairly expensive camera too. I've written to Sony. They haven't got back to me yet. It's only two years old. But I will improvise, adapt and overcome. And we will get a video out. of, of And uh, I won't tell you what it is, but it's, it's going to be one of those 10 to 15 tip videos and i'm going to have quite a bit of fun with it i'm going to have quite a bit of fun doing it as my umbrella just about blows off again so you stay tuned for that coming up this saturday my time anyway i better get cracking and get into it there's lots of things to do thanks again for watching everyone bye for now end stream